Before we look at some concrete examples as to why more experts and scientists have come to the conclusion that ancient people were able to sail across the oceans and even dare to talk about a global civilization that flourished thousands of years ago. Let's take a brief look at a period of time in history called the Younger Dryas Age. About 12,800 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, the North American continent was hit by a very large comet estimated to have been about 100 kilometers in diameter. The comet fragmented in some areas where the ice layer was up to 3 kilometers thick. The worldwide catastrophe is still echoing in countless flood myths around the world. However, there is proof of this still controversial comet impact. For example, ice core samples that show rapid melting of northern ice cover and a rise of sea levels in a very short time. First up to 9 meters worldwide during the first 24 hours. And eventually, over 100 meters on top of that. Also, nanodiamonds, iridium, molten glass, and craters can be found scattered over a large area, and these can only be found after a nuclear explosion or a cosmic impact. Massive amounts of ice were thrown into the atmosphere, where it rained down for days, weeks, even months, as well as snow, ashes, mud, and rock boulders. In addition to this, a very important geological proof of a great catastrophe in distant history is the so-called black mat layer. All the extinct animals and Clovis human artifacts can be found below this black layer. For such a layer to exist, a considerable amount of North American biomass had to burn into ashes in a short period of time. And during this period, the so-called Quaternary Extinction Event killed about 75% of North American's large animal species, also called megafauna, were terminated, including the Clovis people. More than 120 species of animals weighing 45 kilograms or more faced extinction. In this distant past, North America had more large species than in Africa today. And that's not all. This cosmic impact was followed by a nuclear winter that lasted over a thousand years and made the extinction event even worse. For example, in Siberia, mammoths have been found whose stomach still had fresh plants, as if the animals were frozen while eating. And in mainstream history, the hunter-gatherer human is considered to be responsible for this mass extinction of the megafauna. It is a pretty wild argument to suggest that these primitive cavemen could have hunted 10 million mammoths to extinction with spears before they could reproduce. Then we get to these puzzle pieces, for which there is no place in mainstream history. In 1992, German scientist Svetlana Balabanova made a surprising discovery while examining the mummy of Lady Henut Taue. After authenticated experiments, she found traces of nicotine and cocaine, which 3,000 years ago only grew in South America. Could it be possible? that 2,500 years before Columbus's infamous journey, Egyptians already had culture and trade relations over the great oceans? In this next slideshow, we can see the cultural connection between the Incas and Egyptians, which in mainstream history is disregarded as just a coincidence.
Let's take a quick revisit what we have been going through so far. At the end of the previous ice age, the Clovis Comet from the Taurid meteor stream hit the North American continent, causing a worldwide catastrophe. The Taurid meteor stream is still visible today, twice a year around June and November, lasting several days. During this time, the Earth passes through the meteor zone, which also has been linked to Comet Enki. This passing causes a lot of shooting stars and close calls. Here's a little more famous shooting star. In June 1908, something really big exploded in Tunguska. Although the Quaternary Extinction event ended the era of the Clovis people, Homo sapiens survived this massive catastrophe. And in the light of current information, modern man, Homo sapiens, has survived different kinds of catastrophes for more than 200,000 years. Flood myths are found in almost every corner of the world, and can be divided into three categories. Category 1 myths that are almost similar to the Biblical Flood. Category 2 myths that are quite similar to the Biblical Flood. And the myths of Category 3 focus only on a worldwide disaster caused by massive flooding. What a coincidence that in Plato's exact description about the fate of Atlantis, the time frame of this infamous flooding matches perfectly to the Uyghur Dryas meltwater pulse revealed from the ice core samples. And on to the next puzzle piece. Highly advanced civilization emerged from Mesopotamia. Sumerians invented the wheel in writing. And in addition to this, Sumerians played backgammon over 5,000 years ago and utilize the sexagesimal numeral system. With 60 as its base, this system is still used for measuring time, angles, and geographical coordinates. In this next slideshow, we look at this peculiar ancient fashion phenomenon. In a period of time that, according to mainstream historians, civilizations developed completely independently and without a clue what was happening on other continents. So academics consider these eerily similar handbags that are found all over the globe just a coincidence. As they say, third time's the char. Once more, let's go through what happened. The apex predator, Homo sapiens, had been roaming the Earth for at least 200,000 years, peacefully coexisting with monkeys and other animals. Can you imagine that during our 8,000 generations, 
It has been in only the last five to six generations that our technology has developed at a significant pace. Could this massive worldwide disaster that wiped out the Clovis people and the North American megafauna also have reset advanced Homo sapiens culture, leaving us as a species with amnesia? About 6,000 years ago, a highly developed civilization appeared in Mesopotamia. Sumerian Homo sapiens had at their disposal advanced astronomy, mathematics, and writing skills. Then we get to this ancient man-bag fashion – Sumerian, Egyptian, Indian, Maori, Olmec. Even though there are at least a dozen theories mainstream historians are still scratching their heads. No, no. To understand what it is all about, we need to travel to Turkey, where we find the oldest of these stone-etched icons. Gobekli Tepe, this prehistorical temple, is located in the southeastern part of Turkey, about 15 kilometers from the city of Sinyurfa. About 12,000 years ago, deliberately buried underground as if it was a time capsule, Gobekli Tempe is a huge 8-hectare megalithic construction project. It consists of dozens of T-shaped stone pillars, weighing 40 to 60 tons each, erected in a circular shape. Pillar number 43 describes, in addition to birds, scorpion, and reptiles, also these mysterious handbags. The temple is covered with a considerable amount of soil, and only about 5% has been excavated so far. 12,000 years ago, according to mainstream history, modern humans lived in the woods chasing mammoths with spears, eventually killing all of them not having the slightest clue about the massive efforts demanded for such megalithic constructions, advanced tools required for stone art, astronomical alignments, and so on. Ever since the time of Thales, many ancient myths speak of the legendary enlightened bringers of civilization who rose from the sea with skills like writing, art, and science. But still, these puzzle pieces that accurately narrate the downfall of very advanced Homo sapiens are ignored in mainstream history only as a science fiction tale of their own time. Yes, you get one granite block in two parts with a copper saw. When you saw back and forth for weeks, and in the theory, it is possible to transport multi-ton megalithic stone blocks hundreds of miles to using wet palm trunks and bulls. But how long has this been taught? And how many people really believe this? The 
governors give a press conference and how to buy a sailboat Gloria, as Prime News. Gloria, you look like shit. I'm on it. What happened? Not What's wrong? All the sex and violence on the screen has gone too far for me. I'm fed up with it. Filmmakers like George Romero and John Carpenter have to show some restraint. They're simply... Maailmassa näyttää olevan meneillään hyvin huolestuttavaa kehitystä monella tavoin. Miltä sinusta tämä, sinusta tämä tämän päivän tilanne nyt oikein näyttää? No niin, tämän minä sanoisin vastaukseksi, että tuohon kysymykseksi toistaiseksi kuljokaa arveluttavansa, arveluttavaan suuntaan. Ja nyt minä vain heti sanoisin toisata. Siitä puhutaan tiedemiesten suulla ja auktoriteetilla, jotta me havahtuisimme ja emme menisi tahalliseen itsemurhaan. No niin, tämä on meillä pohjat latauksena ikään kuin tajunnassa. Ja sen päällä on suggestio suggestion päälle. Vuosituhansien aikana suggeroitu polvesta polveen. Ehkä siinä on meidän karvaisen esi-isämme puusta laskeutune olennon perintö meissä itse kussakin, ennen kaikkea minussa. Tässä tilassa me elämme ja tämä on se uni, jota Frank tarkoitti. Ja se on hirvittävä vaarallinen uni. Ja tähän jälkimmäiseen kohtaan nämä erikoisesti tarraisin kiinni. Me olemme todella unessa. Ajatus tottumuksen unessa. Nyt on vain kysymys siitä, saammeko ihmiset heräämään kyllin suurin joukoin niin, että suunta muuttuu.